Why is it not good for a boy and a girl to fight with each other? You may think that since it's a sport, it's not such a big deal. This is a big misconception, which can have serious consequences. In this video, I explain the reasons why. Please avoid this harmful activity. As you know, there are significant physical differences between genders. These differences are present even at a young age, although they may not be as noticeable before puberty. Girls under the age of 12 are usually stronger than boys of the same age due to their sex. Also, their flexibility is much greater than that of boys. Due to these two factors and the fact that girls start puberty about 3 to 4 years earlier, they are more likely to win such matches. According to some statistics, this ratio is 85%, while my personal research suggests it to be between 75 to 80%. Although girls' muscles eventually lag behind boys, a teenage girl's muscles are always stronger than a child's. This means that it can easily happen that a child ends up fighting a developing girl and gains an advantage over the boy. In older age, boys' muscle development starts to catch up with girls. But as muscles develop due to other factors as well, the boy still ends up at a disadvantage compared to the girl. But for now, let's focus on the physical aspects, we can address other factors later. As I mentioned at the beginning of the video, the physical structures of the two genders differ greatly from each other. All combat sports, but especially those that involve high levels of contact, such as wrestling, use different techniques based on gender. These techniques were developed to avoid exploiting physical weaknesses of one's own gender. Of course, there are techniques that target these areas for both genders, but practitioners often execute them with caution since they are well aware of these physical weaknesses. After all, they have such weaknesses themselves. Boys generally attack the other person's chest and legs. Girls, on the other hand, target the lower body and arms. We can see that by doing this, they avoid attacking the weak points of the respective gender. In the case of girls, they avoid attacking the chest, while in the case of boys, they avoid attacking the groin. It can be seen from the picture, and you are correct. The two techniques are not compatible with each other. If they fight against each other, the boy attacks the girl's breast, while the girl targets the boy's groin. Would you allow a boy to touch your daughter's breasts at school? Obviously not. So why do we expect boys to do that? They don't want to touch that area and often avoid targeting it in combat sports. This significantly reduces their attacking surface on a girl's body. But even if they do attack it, it's not good because it can have other consequences. It can pose health risks for girls. While in boys it can trigger other natural processes, but I will talk about this in detail in the second part of the video. On a girl-boy match, the girl, on the other hand, aims for the boy's groin. Of course, this can also happen in a boy-boy match, but both parties have this sensitive area so they usually know to be careful there. A girl, on the other hand, doesn't have such an organ, so she can't know how sensitive and painful it can be to exert a stronger force there. Even if someone tells them about it, it cannot be expected that they understand why it is like this. It can cause great pain and damage to the boy, and often it does cause them. Even if it's not intentional, the protection of physical integrity is always of paramount importance. Even if it doesn't cause pain because they're careful, there is another factor that cannot be ignored. The testicles are the most sensitive area of a boy's body. They are a primary sexual characteristic and serve the purpose of reproduction with a female partner in the future. Therefore, any touch on this area by the opposite sex can cause significant sexual stimulation, regardless of the boy's age. Everyone knows that there are two genders in the world, male and female. They exist to maintain the human species, and both genders are naturally attracted to each other. Of course. There are exceptions, but let's consider the most natural state. This attraction, especially in a physical sense, is primarily true for men, but of course, it can also be observed in women. This is the order of nature, because this is normal. If a girl fights against a boy, no matter what we do, the boy can easily experience strong sexual feelings and desires, especially after the onset of puberty, but even before that it can be observed. This is the natural response of the male body to physical touch or proximity with a female. A boy will always see a girl as something special, and will want to slowly discover and get to know her. They often approach them with hesitation, but with time, they can get to know them and have a successful relationship. This is a long and difficult process that every boy goes through. This process should not be disturbed by forcing the boy to have such close physical contact with a girl. Of course, it is possible that the boy may simply say yes to such a struggle, but one should be even more cautious because many take advantage of the opportunity to legally touch a girl in an intimate way. Such things are not suitable for sports activities. They are not compatible with the spirit of sportsmanship. But this issue can have even more serious consequences for a boy. But it should be just as important for girls as well. After all, we are of the same species, and what is harmful to one gender is harmful to the other as well. It is everyone's duty to support the other gender and promote their development. Boys who struggle with erections often can't fight with full force because it weakens them. There is a great expression for this. A boy's greatest weakness is girls. It is a very accurate and expressive thing to say. So far, I have only talked about the disadvantages that a boy has to struggle with during a fight with a girl. 
As we have seen, he starts with multiple disadvantages. It is not even sportsmanlike to force anyone to participate in a fight that they are likely to lose. You cannot pit a 60 kilograms and a 90 kilograms boxer against each other because it would not be fair to either side, but especially not to the 60 kilograms boxer. If the 90 kilograms boxer won in this fight, they wouldn't be happy because there was no challenge for them. However, the 60 kilograms boxer can rightfully celebrate because they won against a boxer who had better odds. In a boy-girl fight, if a boy wins, he almost never rejoices, but the girl almost always does. However, the girl theoretically shouldn't be happy because she had a better chance of winning. The boy should theoretically be happy because he had less chance of winning. But why doesn't this happen in reality? This is due to a very serious matter that many people overlook, are not aware of, or simply do not consider important. This is one of the most important things in the whole issue. The thing behind this is nothing else but the social structure of gender, or to be more precise, the different social structures of genders. The way the two genders think, perceive themselves and others, and their motivations are very different from each other. This is understandable since men exist because there are women, and women exist because there are men. They do not exist without each other, but it is precisely their differences that make the opposite gender truly valuable. Just because they are different, it doesn't mean that they are worth less. It is in the interest of both genders to respect and support each other in the development and strengthening of their gender identity. In women's communities, the questioning of another person's gender identity is almost never brought up. This is true for other women, but also for men. It is very rare for this to happen. Whether a woman is blonde, brunette, overweight, short, young, or old, it doesn't matter, because a woman is a woman and they are completely right. In the male society, however, things work very differently. Boys need constant affirmation up until the age of about 25. They have to constantly prove to themselves and other boys their masculinity. This can be a painful, difficult and taxing process, but this is not a bad thing. It is what ultimately makes a boy into a man. If a boy successfully goes through this difficult and sometimes ruthless process, he will live as a completely different person. These types of men are much more accepting, loving to their families, and accepting of others. If we interfere in this process, it can cause significant harm. For a boy, physical combat is never just a fight. It is a test of masculine strength where he can prove it, especially to himself. It is not always necessary to win against another boy. It is enough if he gives his all and puts himself out there. If a girl beats a boy in a competition, then she disrupts the process through which the boy was trying to prove his masculinity to himself. Therefore, in that moment, the girl appears more masculine than him. This can cause huge mental damage. If you see a boy crying after such a competition, it's not just simple crying. It's much more serious. It is a huge emotional and sexual injury for him. No child deserves to experience such pain. As I mentioned earlier, if a boy wins such a match, he never rejoices. Because to him, this fight didn't mean anything. He wants to measure his masculinity against other boys. In fact, boys often don't even talk about these matches because they are not good experiences for them. Don't think for a moment that this is because they look down on girls. Not at all. But this is a male-specific trait. This is not a thing to be looked down upon, and it is everyone's duty to respect it. The problem may not only arise in this situation. If you add a girl to a sports team coached by a male coach or have mixed teams of boys and girls, it can also cause issues. Boys prefer to be with their own gender, socialize and train with them. This has a very positive effect on their gender development and social relationships. That's true in schools too, where they can get to know each other without any restrictions. Training together doesn't necessarily make them respect each other's gender more. What's helpful is if they train in the same space but with their own gender. Having boys and girls in close proximity and giving them the opportunity to communicate can be very inspiring. I would like to emphasize that this is not because of looking down on girls, but rather a male-specific trait. There are many examples of how this practice can have negative effects on boys, but also on girls if we allow it to continue. As men have greater physical strength later in life, separating the sexes is necessary. It is in the interest of boys in their younger years to do the same. Both sexes deserve to develop in safety and good health. This is a common interest for both sexes. I would like to add that it is also not beneficial for girls because, as I mentioned earlier, they are in an easier or stronger position. They will fight against weaker opponents. Therefore, they will be at a disadvantage against those girls who only fought against other girls. Only because of the fact that they will not be able to use most of the techniques later on. Moreover, they will lack the necessary skills since they do not practice enough. Summary. This is a very harmful activity, for both genders but especially for boys. Please treat the boy as a human being, as an equal, and do not look down on him. Support his development so that he can become a man who is worthy of being a partner to your daughter in the future.